Hi guys, I'm The Standard and this is The Geek In Review. And man oh man, what a day it's been of the new episode of Star Trek, all the Marvel stuff, all the Disney stuff, it's, it's absolutely crazy and we've got a new episode of The Mandalorian as well. I've already done a quick Loki easter egg video that I noticed in the trailer but I've not really had a significant look at the new uh, Marvel and Disney stuff. I will try and do a video a day about that coming up but as I said, we've got a new episode of The Mandalorian, so let's get to it. Now we're picking up straight away where we left off last week, but it isn't the episode that I thought we were going to get. It's not Mando putting the gang together for one big fight at the end. Instead, this is a very different and very deeper episode. In fact, this might be the most deep episode we're getting in terms of Din Djarin himself and how this season he's opened up and what it is to be a Mandalorian. Oh, and also, there's a shit ton of Mad Max Fury Road stuff and we get an office space joke about TPS reports, but that's an Easter egg and I'll probably get into that in another video. Again, there's just so much to do and I'm just doing this, so let's just focus on the Mandalorian. So it starts off with Kara breaks Mayfield out in order to help him access an Imperial database and good job too, because the guard that was watching him Seriously, that droid had a bit of Ed 209 vibes from Robocop. Am I the only one that's seen that? I mean, go back and listen to what he says, that's... Yeah, you know, he would only have a few minutes or a few seconds to comply. That was scary stuff there for a second. But if you do look about at the surroundings of where Mayfield is, you see a lot of Imperial hardware that's getting broken down. At first, I thought this was all, oh, they're just asking them to scrap TIE fighters to remind them that the Empire lost and remind them of its place. But this episode's more than that, and this is just a sign of what we're going to get into here. Now, the reunion between Mando and Mayfield is great. He sees Boba Fett first, and he's worried that it is the Mandalorian. He makes this joke about, sorry, I thought you were another guy. And then, kills cool a cucumber, Mando comes swanning off the ship, and Mayfield goes from being relieved to come back to being absolutely terrified. And... And a side quest, which shouldn't be a surprise, we get them every week. They have to go to an Imperial base to allow Mayfield to trace Moff Gideon's location. Now this is on a planet which sounds familiar, it's called Morag. There is a planet in the Guardians of the Galaxy in the MCU with a similar name, but I do think it's spelt differently and obviously it's definitely not the same planet. But if it does sound familiar, that's why. So don't get confused, they're both owned by Disney, but they're different franchises. At the moment, Disney could tie them together again. There's so many shows, I've got no idea what's going on. But anyway, back to The Mandalorian. Now once they get to the planet, Mando and Mayfield are the only two that can get into the base as the rest of them are either recognised enemies of the Empire or they're a guy who's got a clone trooper's face so Boba Fett would get recognised straight away with the helmet off. Fett, let's just say they might recognise my face. Now, they've been teasing it since we met Bo-Katan that Mando will be taking his helmet off more in this season or at least that we're going to get another look at his face. He is confronted with the option to do this in order to get past the base security easily so of course he does it naturally, he mugs a stormtrooper and he takes their outfit and helmet, so we don't get it, but you know, it's definitely coming. However, we're going to get back onto this, but what I want to talk about here is this episode is dealing with who you are versus who you were, and it's how your views may have changed, and Mayfield really goes into this because he's realised that what the Empire is, is just the same as what Mando's realised and what the Watch is. It's not what they thought it was, or it's certainly not what, they, what it was when they signed up to it, and the reality is now hitting home. Throughout this episode, Mando is confronted with the chance to remove his helmet in order to make the task easier, but he decides not to do it, and after going through the jungle fury road... Are you seriously shooting a blaster in your right dodium? Which I was surprised about, I didn't think I was going to enjoy it. It was a little bit too long, but it was generally pretty good. I never thought we'd see a scene like that in Star Wars of a wheeled sort of vehicle confrontation, but again, it was all George Miller and Mad Max, so I was quite happy with that, because they've done Ronin, They've done all this sort of cowboy stuff this season, so it's good that they're paying homage to other franchises as well. So after Mando and Mayfield survive the Hover Bandits, they're greeted like heroes when they arrive at the base. Now, this is what makes this episode really interesting, as this is the mirror to all those scenes where they've seen before, where they've blown up the Death Star and arrive home and are celebrated, or at that time they blew up Starkiller Base and arrived home and celebrated. Or you know that other time that they blew up the Death Star again and arrived home again and celebrated again. But my point is, this show is doing what Star Wars should do best. 
and that's giving us great villains. Well, none of these guys are really terrifying, apart from Mayfield's ex-commanding officer they ran into, but hey, that's the creepy guy actor who's in everything. Seriously, just have a look at his IMDb page. He's the guy that killed Batman's parents. He was the original White Walker in Game of Thrones. Terrifying, so I can see why they cast him, and he's great in the role. But my point is, these guys are the heroes of their own story. While Mando was forced to remove his helmet for a face scan, and we knew we were going to get it, it has been rumoured that Pedro Pascal has been unhappy that he's not getting more face time on the show. But I won't be showing my face. So we get it and we get a lot more than we got in season one. I'm not really going to ruin it here unless you want to. I'm going to so this is your warning. So while Mando's doing this, Mayfield's old superior confronts him and Mayfield comes up with an excuse to try and get out of it. But being the heroes, this guy wants to buy them a drink and talk about old times. You can imagine Mayfield being confronted with his old superior who's made some questionable decisions with regards to winning battles and the value of life to win battles and certainly the value of his troops' lives. Mando isn't the only one having issues letting go, with Mayfield running into the guy who no doubt killed dozens of his mates, along with hundreds of others, doesn't go well, and I mean it really doesn't go well. All those people, the ones who died, was it good for them? After Mayfield reminds him of a battle where the Empire suffered heavy losses, this guy's reply is, anyone that died was a hero of the Empire, and then of course he gets shot first. But seeing Mayfield here as an ex-trooper, he clearly still has an issue with not only what he's done, but the cause that he worked for and the cost that it came with doing the actions that he done for that cause is what makes this a great episode. We get to see at least that some members of the Empire weren't all goose-stepping assholes. Some of these guys have had to live with the consequences of their actions and it's great that we're getting to see this play out. They're not just nameless, faceless villains. These guys have got to live with what they've done and what they've seen as well. But once the side quest's complete, Mando and the gang let Mayfield go, and then Mando drops the mic on Gideon, and I mean seriously. What the? Oh, this is maybe the best part of this episode. Sending him a sort of Empire style hologram transmission, Mando basically repeats the speech that Gideon said to him at the end of season one. You may think you have some idea what you are in possession of, but you do not about not knowing what he's got and how much it means to him and how he's going to get it back at any cost and man, I don't know about you but my hairs were standing up on my arms, my neck and anywhere else that's not your concern. While this episode wasn't the episode I was expecting and it certainly wasn't the best in terms of action or shock reveals, it was solid in character and story development. We get even more hints of the First Order but I'll get into that in another video. Again, I've got so much to do with all the Marvel stuff but let's just, I'm going to stop talking about it, everyone's talking about it, look at Twitter, it's crazy. To the mines on Boba Fett's ship from Attack of the Clones and the TPS reports from Office Space. You probably don't know what I'm talking about but seriously, if you haven't heard of that film, go and check it out. It's great, it's very funny and I didn't really expect this easter egg to ever pop up in Star Wars which again, this show is handing out loads of surprises. But that's just what I think, what about you? Did you like this episode or are you just looking forward to the finale? Let me know in the comments below or you can follow me on Twitter at The Geeks Reviews. Leave a like and a subscribe if you can and if you can, thanks for watching. I've been The Standard, this has been The Geek In Review, you've been great.